These characters obviously need no introduction. You probably have them, or you hate them because of the new movie or series on HBO. To me, that doesn't matter. I'm not a big collector of the Masters of the Universe. But I do like a few of the figures, especially these current ones. I love the sculpt, the details, I really like the accessories, and I bought these three. And yes, I did buy a Battle Cat. However, like any other figure, especially these in particular, they do need a few more paint apps. And I've started working with the rub and buff tint or pigment. And I'm going to show you what that does. Each one of these figures required something a little bit different than the other, but it was very minimal. So that's why there's three figures in this one video. Let's get started. So the rub and buff is a paste. It's a gold leaf alternative to actually using gold leaf. It's a pigment, it's not a paint. So it actually stains and dyes whatever it touches. In this case, it's the plastic. So you wanna be very careful to cover any of the portions you don't want to transfer any of that pigment, especially if it gets on your hands. Now, for video purposes, I have already gone ahead and worked most of this figure. And let me show you on this left pauldron what it looks like and what it looked like before. Well, you saw what it looked like before, a bright yellow. And by adding this pigment to the actual plastic, it actually tints it in a gold. It's not a paint, so you don't have to wait hours for it to dry. You don't need paint thinner to thin it down. You just apply it, you literally rub it on and, and buff it. Once it's dry, you can take a soft terry cloth towel and polish it with that towel. So it looks really, really nice. And of course, then you can seal it so that it doesn't rub off. Now, because it is a pigment, it is very susceptible to your oils on your hand. So if you're gonna be handling these figures, especially if you're still working on them, I do recommend that you seal it either in a matte finish or in a high gloss finish, depending on the article that you're working on. And as you can tell, for those really tight spots, you can use a bristle brush. And of course, you'll have to clean out that brush before you store it. And you need more than just water to clean it out. Now let's continue with our second figure. It's another He-Man. And this one has a few different articles. We got a shield that's got some silver on it. That's gonna require this, the silver rub and buff. And we're gonna use a new Q-tip. One side will be for the silver and one side will be for the gold. So as you can tell, I have already masked out my figure for video purposes. I've done that ahead of time. And I'm just gonna lightly rub on the belt with the gold leaf rub and buff. Once that is done, and it takes only a few minutes to dry, I can then move on to the gauntlet or the bracelet, and then I can move on to the silver rub and buff. <laughs>
that we have all of the gold leaf taken care of, let's let this dry for a while and let's move on to the shield. And as you can tell, supposedly the shield is silver on both sides. But we're going to take the silver rubbing buff, and we're going to take a clean side of the Q-tip, dip it into that paste, and then gently rub it into all of those gray areas. And we're going to watch those turn to silver. Pretty amazing how this stuff works. It's just a paste, it is not a paint, and as you can tell, a very little bit goes a long, long way. So that too will last you for an indefinite amount of time. Well, I should say definite, but a very long time. You'll be able to paint several items or figures with just that one tube. Again, it only takes a few minutes for this stuff to dry. We can go back to our figure and pull off that tape and take a look at the finished work with the gold leaf. I really like the way this turned out. Now, I decided to do something more with these and I should have done this before, but I was too excited to work with that gold leaf. But I went ahead and painted the bodies with some more shape. Let's take a look. So both of these bodies, even though they're the same body, they have different tones of plastic. One is more yellow, one is more red. So I had to mix colors for each one of them. I do not want to change them entirely because these are incredibly difficult to take apart. 
So I want to enhance what's already there. I don't want to change the color as I don't want to paint the joints. And because I am doing so, I have to mask off every portion that is not to be painted. And in this case, I masked off all of the areas for the boots and the trunks, uh, the loincloth, and of course the uh, bracelet on the, on the wrist. Now the rest of it is all exposed and you can use a sealant as a primer. I use the uh, Liquitex matte finish because it takes the paint really well. The paint that I'm using is the Vallejo Premium and I've mixed in the red, the yellow, and a little bit of blue to make it more of a reddish brown. And I'm only using that to uh, create uh, tones uh, a little darker in the muscle areas. So they're more of a shadow. So I'm spraying from the top or spraying uh, from the bottom up and spraying at an angle. So I've done that to most of the figure. Now, take a look here. This is the figure that's already airbrushed. The other one is not. It's a big difference in the two. It's hard to tell actually here on the video. But now, going on to the next figure, which is a more of a yellow tone, I have to mix my colors in that yellow, in that same yellow tone to enhance it, not to change the color. Now again, let's pull off all of this tape and let's find out how it looks. And as you can tell, I've already done a little bit of work to the uh, loincloth on this one with the dry brush and it really really looks much better than what they came out of the package. So let's remove the tape off of the boots and let's take a look at this and I may come back later and actually apply some real fur to the actual top part of the boots because it's not, not too keen on having fake plastic on the boots like that. And these figures all use the same mold. And I actually do want them to look different. Now I've also applied some dry brush to the boots themselves and they stand out that much better. Now with Tila, the technique had to change slightly in the sense that I had to mask the areas on her actual costume because that doesn't come off. And I didn't enhance the tone on the skin because she really didn't have enhanced muscular texture. So I went ahead and just worked on the shield. And as you can tell here, it really changes it. I masked off the bracelets or the bracers uh, on the arm. And then I went ahead and used the gold on that. Now, as far as the body armor or the, the skirt, the tunic that she's got, I did freehand part of it. And then I went in and masked off the edges to avoid getting onto the white. And then it goes up through the center, it stops just underneath the chest. And then I also painted that in with the, well, it's not painting, it's pigmenting with the gold leaf. But it was very minimal because it's such a small figure. So it went really easy and much, much quicker. And because it dries quickly, I was able to finish this off much quicker than the other two figures. And that's all I did with Tila. And then of course the, uh, the shield that you saw there, but I only uh, worked on one side. The inside of the shield is not finished. And that's so you can see the difference between the two sides. I'll work on that later. And of course to remove this tape because it's so tiny, I had to use some tweezers. Other than that, this figure is ready to go. So this is our final look for all three figures, and some required more work than others as you already saw. And one word of advice, if you're going to remove those harnesses off of the He-Man figures, you need to do that with a hair dryer. While it's still hot, the item must be stretched. On this particular one, those buckles in the back, you heat those up and you can loosen it to open it up. Now the buckles on the other, you can loosen it, but it is actually cinched around the uh, underarm. So you actually have to stretch that harness and pull it over his head. 
will actually have to remove the head. So this one is really difficult to remove and to reinstall. And if you break it, you're toast. So you may be better off leaving it on and painting around it. I had a hard time removing it. I had a hard time replacing it. But it made all the difference in the end when I painted the skin tone on the body. If this is your first time visiting this channel, thank you for stopping by. If you are returning, thank you very much once again for coming back. Remember, I do have an Amazon affiliate account and the links will be in the description below. And of course, this rub and buff you can pick up at any Michaels store. But in the meantime, keep customizing. We'll see you here next time.